Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. You said the entrance of your word gives understanding to the simple. And where we are simple in revelation and knowledge, we ask in the name of Jesus, Father, to open our eyes that we may see Jesus, the living word. And Jesus, you said your words are spirit and their life. And we ask for the impartation of spirit and life into our being today, Lord. Spirit, soul, and body that will affect every area of our lives, God. Because that's what your word does, Lord. It affects every area of our lives that pertain to us in life and godliness. We thank you for increase of your government and peace in us. In Jesus' name and by your blood, Lord. We all said, Amen. I tell you, as we were driving up here, the Lord just dropped this word into my heart. And then when I was sitting here, I just downloaded the scripture. So, and I felt him compel me that we're going to share it today. And, you know, we've been talking a, a, a lot about uh, right from the beginning of this year. God's been the first one, yeah, an open door to the Holy of Holies. And uh, I kind of feel I want to, I want to group this, these messages and call them the Paradise Series. Because that's another whole message I'm going to share. <laughs> I can't keep up with the, the messages that God's downloading in my heart. And uh, I felt God said, I'm going to share this word today. And it simply is, is titled, Standing Boldly in God's Presence. Now, it's easier said than done. And by certain scriptures and certain people, you, you must ask yourself a question today. Remember, the word of God is our standard. It's our rule. You don't measure your life by anything else. Don't measure it by me. Don't measure it by any great apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, pope, bishop, or whatever angel. You measure it according to the written word. And that's why I always give scriptures. And we've got a, we've, it's actually a command in scripture. And I'll give you a few. We'll just take it through. That we have to be bold. Listen, God does not like timidity. He has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Not, you know, we always think it's towards demons and towards man. It's also toward him. And we'll see the scriptures. So timidity is not the same as humility. Humility carries confidence, but timidity carries inferiority. Think of this when you come before God now, because they're tightly standing boldly in God's presence, or it involves a whole lot of things. Hebrews chapter 6, 11 and 12, it says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence, watch this, to the full assurance of hope until the end. Full assurance. Say full assurance. Not a half-baked Inzi weensy assurance, full assurance, which takes faith, it takes confidence, it takes courage, by the way, of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So next message I'm going to be talking about our inheritance. It was, was going to be today, but the Lord just said, I need to do this. I, I feel, you know, I, I kind of think I know why. This connects with my word for 2024, an open door to the Holy of Holies. Because if you can't stand boldly to God, you'll never stand boldly against demons and against man and against circumstances. If you can and I can stand boldly, and you've heard me say it a few times, and I'm going to quote the scripture that I always use. If we can come out of God's presence alive, as it were, <laughs> then you can stand against any other presence that, that presents itself to you. And there are many presences that are ungodly. The presence of demons, the presence of circumstances, the presence of the world system. They are our enemies. Are we going to be intimidated by them? Presence of media. Gosh, man, there's so many voices that are anti against us. And faith is always bold. 
Scripture says what is not of faith is sin. <laughs> Which means we have to have faith. We have to have a believing heart. Believing heart is, is, is taking courage in God's word against all odds. As they say, come hello high water. <laughs> Hebrews 10 verses 22 and 23. A lot of scriptures in Hebrews, interestingly enough. Let us draw near. Draw near to who? To where? Well, the Bible says draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Here's that word again. Full assurance of faith. We just read full assurance of hope. Full assurance of faith. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. <laughs> it's interesting. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience or unbelieving conscience and our bodies washed with pure water, I believe that's, when, it's, when it talks about that, it's not literal. The Bible talks about the washing of the water of the word. And I believe that's what this is symbolizing. Because we don't go around and do that stuff like in the Old Testament. We don't have to do that anymore. But I believe that is just symbolic. Then verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Look how bold those scriptures are. You know, when it comes to God, there is, think about it. I was thinking about this the other day. Liars are cowards. I don't know if you notice that. But people of truth are very bold because they've got nothing to hide. I've seen it over and over. You talk to someone who's, got, who's a person of truth, they've got nothing to hide. They will say things like it is. But a liar is a coward and it ducks and dives and gives half-truths and it, it works with deception and, and manipulation and all that. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. I'm not afraid of anything. He was bold to proclaim who he was. That's why when it comes to us believing who we are in Christ, we've got to say it. You've got to say it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Woo, Lord. I am the apple of his eye. I'm engraved upon the palms of his hands. I'm inscribed on the palms of his hands. Got to be bold and, and believing to say that and really believe it. You know, you, you might laugh at me or, or, or smirk at me, but sometimes we know things by faith. But I tell you, when the revelation of faith hits you, nothing can hold you back. You know, it's been happening to me lately. I've been saying this to you for a while now. I've been having a revelation of that scripture that says his mercies are new every morning. And I've been coming boldly to the throne of grace to receive my mercies. Whatever the, what, and, and the way, I think I shared a message on it, it's on YouTube there somewhere. Uh, I think I did share something, or I've been saying it enough. His mercies are anything you, you lack for the moment. You know, if you're coming into the day or the week or the month and you need this, Draw on his mercies for that provision, for that need. Just this week, maybe last week, I've been having a revelation of this. And I know you're going to probably laugh at me because I'm preaching 50 years now already with this thing. But a revelation hit me that I'm adopted by God. And when you look at adoption, and I've preached it so many times, you have, you, have divide, you have adoption rights. You know, when, when uh, uh, legally, yeah, when we talk about being adopted, you, there's a whole set of rules you go through before you can adopt a child. They have to see, can you, can, are you loving to this child? Will you protect this child? Will you educate this child? Will you feed this child? Will you clothe this child? Will you accommodate this child? There's so much that that is demanded on you more than your own birth children. Do you know that? Go and check it out legally. There's more demand on someone who adopts a child than, than having to treat their own child. There's actually law imposed on you for adoption. <laughs> oh, my goodness. 
when, they, when you adopt a child, they even have a social worker that comes and checks up on you every now and then to see that you're keeping to the, the rights of adoption. So I had a, been having a revelation. And, and, and you know what? When you have a revelation and you act on it and you believe and you say it, there's always a manifestation of it. And I've been experiencing the manifestation of God's mercies. This, this week and last week, probably about last week, I've been coming boldly to the throne of grace and I've been saying, Lord, I receive the benefits of my divine adoption. Shoo, and things are happening. Like, what? I'm telling you now, things are happening. Miracles are taking place in, 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 in my life. That's why we, Pastor Damien, are very confident when we say, watch this space. I've told you, we've already got the money for all the buildings here. I'm looking at about 30 million. You know why I know I've got the money? It's not in my bank account. It's out there somewhere, but it's coming. It's just, it's just been, it's, I don't know if you can see this. It's been set up. It's been orchestrated. There's people with the money for the buildings on this land. <laughs> I'm telling you, exactly like this building came up, debt free. Watch, watch like dominoes. You see, God, you've got to come boldly to the throne of grace. God cannot work, listen to me, God cannot work with a timid spirit. You cannot work with a timid spirit. It's timid, timidity is not faith. God has not given you a spirit of fear, timidity. That's what the original says. Creep into his presence. Oh, Lord, you know, I, I want to just know if, if it's at all possible, God, if you can just afford it from your, from your riches in glory. I just need, ugh, no, man, you know, slap that devil out of your life. You're a child. You have divine rights. Yes, one of the scriptures, I haven't got in my notes, but uh, whoever's working the scriptures, uh, John chapter 1, I think it's verse 12 and 13 or 11 and 12, it says, as many as received him, to them he gave the power, that word power is authority, to become children of God. You've got to take your rightful place. And, and you, I'll be honest with you, you know what's been holding me back? from, I think, this revelation is that I'm very hard on myself. I'm trying to not get there. I'm very hard on myself. If I make a mistake, I, I come down on myself like a ton of bricks. It's something I need to work on in my life, to not be so hard on myself. <laughs> and so because I'm hard on myself, I think that God is hard on me. He's not. He's, he's ever loving. He's so approachable. He's the most approachable person you can ever, ever have in the universe. That's what the Bible says. God, God says, I'm not a man that I should lie. Have I not said, come unto me all you that labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Come by, uh, uh, what's it, water without price. Come, 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 call on me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know. How many times does God beckon us to approach him? Draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. I don't know if you guys can get that. Here's another reason we can stand boldly in God's presence because we, we are the righteous ones. By virtue of being his child, you've been made righteous. What is righteous? You've been given right standing with God. You've, you've been made to be, uh, you've been, you and I have been given permission. How else can I say that? We have permission to, to come into the house, as it were, and open the fridge and pour your, make yourself some tea or coffee with whatever. How many of you live in, live in a house or a flat? Hands up. I know it's a silly question. I'm talking about your own house, basically, even whether it's renting or whatever, you all, you all live in some accommodation. Do any of you 
beg for permission. Even the children, maybe there is certain laws that you're not allowed to eat certain things. I, I know there's budgeting and all that. But none of us are beggars when it comes to living in our own house and wanting to go and make a cup of tea, coffee, sandwich, whatever. Am I right? How much more? God's house. Because Jesus said it, if we as fathers being evil know how to bless our children, how much more will your Father in heaven not give you all good things? I must well just advertise in that. You need to get my book, The Father and I. Those of you watching, it will change your life forever. Change your life forever. I read through the first 44 pages just the other day and I couldn't believe I wrote those things. But I know it's the Holy Spirit through me. I was like blown away. Gosh, Lord, is this, wow, this is powerful. Yes, Lord, okay, I receive this. Because <laughs> sometimes you forget what you've written. Yo. That's why we have to always be reminded of, of God's goodness and mercy. We are the righteous ones. Turn to someone and say, you are so righteous. Oh, and righteousness has got nothing to do with, with, with uh, achieving it. It's a gift. We'll read you the scripture in a moment. Well, here it is here. Here's one of them. Romans 5 verse 17, by the way, talks about receiving the gift of righteousness. You know, just, let's just read this. But as many as received him. Have you received the Lord yet? Yeah? Okay. To them he gave the right. That's a good word. The right. You know what a, a right the, the, the word righteous, the root word for, well, one of the root words for righteous is the word right. Right means you're right. You're not wrong. <laughs> it's so simple. It's not wrong to be righteous. <laughs> he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. So if you're a child of God, man, don't, Cut your nose off to spite your face, as they say, and, and, and not come boldly to his throne to obtain mercy and find help in the time of need. 2 Corinthians 5.21, For he made him, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Right standing, right uh, on talking terms with God, on walking terms with God, on friendship terms with God, on provision terms with God, on protecting terms with God. Everything we need, we are on that term with God. He's looking after us. Proverbs 28 verse 1, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. I challenge any one of you to go into the game reserve and go and challenge a lion. See what happens to you. When that lion sees you coming, he'll suddenly, if he's a Christian lion, he'll get on his knees for what I'm about to receive. <laughs> Lord, I'm truly thankful. <laughs> and we, we are, the, the Bible doesn't say you'll grow into it. How, uh, I've learned something, and I'll give you one of the incidences that, you've heard this before, but I'll say it. Oh, I've, I've got so many of these stories. It's in my book, Your Prophetic Release, some of the testimonies. When you read those testimonies, I'll give you one of them. And I've learned that that. Boldness, listen to me, is a choice of faith and believing the word. When I was a young stanger, God spoke to me to go out. I got some of the young people together and I just felt to go. So we went to the, the city hall and I think there was a dance going on there. And we witnessed a little bit. Then, then we felt, let's go into town. This is in Stanger. And as we got toward the city center, we saw pulleys, vans, and crowds of people, and commotion, and glass shattering, and whatever. And uh, when we got there, there were two, uh, 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 the, the crowd was predominantly Indian people. 
and uh, Indian shopkeepers. And it was not, I don't think it was dark, dark. I can't remember it was dark at night yet. It was just getting dark. And there were two white guys from Richards Bay or Impangini. I don't know their names, but they were big dudes. Uh, and they were smashing all the cars of the shop owners, the Indian shop owners. It was a very racial thing going on. I don't know why the police weren't in getting involved and arresting them. And uh, when I got there, I literally saw one of them take his kung fu stick, smash the window of the shop open, smash the, all the windows of the car. And you know, like you see in the movies, I saw them throw one of the shopkeepers out literally like a into the road. And I stood on the side and I would pull his people around. And uh, I knew I, uh, God sent me here to do something. And what had happened, the, the, they both stood in the middle of the road, the one guy with his kung fu sticks, the, 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 the bigger guy. They were brothers. And uh, challenged everybody. He said, come on, who's next? And, I, and like David, an indignation got up inside of me and I just turned to the youth I said just pray for me stepped out the pavement started walking toward I didn't know what I was going to do I didn't know what was going to happen I just started walking toward the, the main guy and then when he saw me coming he thought I was going to challenge him for a fight I mean I'm like this he's like that you know he's built he's got a waistcoat on muscles bulging everywhere long hair sweating violent I started walking toward him and I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just walking toward him. And he's, he goes like he's ready and he holds a kung fu stick. He's going to now take, take me out. As I get a, literally just before he can reach me, the anointing hits me and I point him and I prophesy to him. God says, and I can remember the words, God says, I have called you not to fight with the fight of the flesh, but with a fight of love. You're a backslidden believer and God's calling you back to him now. He stood frozen. He dropped the kung fu sticks. He walked over to me. That's when I started shaking in the flesh because <laughs> I didn't know if he was going to take my head off. And this big guy comes and he, he you know, it's like that, in that one movie, you, you know, we, um, Heart, the movie Heart with that big giant is fighting them and then he's talking to him. You know that actor and he says, no, you've got a, your, your wife has left you and you're having problems and he walks over to him and he puts his hand, I don't know if you've seen that movie, Heart or something, and he starts crying. Well, this is exactly what this guy did. He walks over to me. I start shaking, to be honest. I need to show it, but I thought, Oof, here we go. And he, he dropped his kung fu sticks. He walked over to me. He put his big arms over my shoulder and he put his head in. He said, please pray for me. His younger brother wanted to hit me. He said, get away. <laughs> Shut up. Put that down. And, he, and, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to pray for him. Like and I'm losing my breath. I'm hyperventilating. Like, thank, thank you for, for this. What's, what's your name? <laughs> and I tell you what, the, uh, I only thing I regret that I don't know why I didn't do it is, is to stand up on one of the dustbins and preach the gospel because I had everyone captive at that moment. Anyway, I've, I've done other things like that before. I've done a lot of those kind of things in my youth. Sure. The last one I did was here in Maritzburg. We went out and preached and uh, we were challenged. I don't know if I've got that in there. I took the church we, and we stood outside the pub, the, the opposite game, there's a, there was a bar there. And we were singing choruses and this guy came out and he started, he obviously singled me out as the, as the leader and he wanted to come and start a fist fight with me. And I had just been given a, 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 a sports jacket, like a, I don't know who gave it to me, but a very expensive jacket, like, like a Ferrari jacket or something like that. And it was winter, man. <laughs> And the Lord said to me, give him your jacket. And I've learned to you obey quickly because the other guy's coming. Took my jacket off and I said, God said, I must give this to you. He stopped in his tracks. He, he stopped coming toward me to, to fight with me. He said, can we pray around the corner? And I thought, oh Lord, help me, Jesus. I don't know if he's going to give me fivefold ministry behind the scenes or whatever. 
And he started pouring his heart out to me. He started repenting, saying, I'm sorry for his violence, but he's going through a divorce. He's, he, he's, uh, he's 10,000 rand in debt, and his wife didn't know about it. She found out about it, and all oh, hell's broken loose. That's why he's so... And I was able to pray and, and lead the God to the Lord. Guys, boldness will take you places, and faith will take you places that timidity will never go near. Now, I'm not saying you ought to do what I've just said you must do now. I'm not saying you ought to do that. But you've got to have boldness against devils, poverty. You've got to have boldness against sickness when it tries to come on your body. You've got to have boldness against uh, lying spirits that say you're not going to make it. You've got to rise up on the inside. Great is he who is in you than he who is in the world against you. If God be for us, who can be against us? We have to uh, apply our, our rights in Christ Jesus. And you've got to do it boldly. You can't do it with timidity. It will never work. So if the righteous are as bold as a lion, then, then Isaiah 32 verse 17 will be one of our benefits. The work of righteousness will be peace. The righteous are as bold as lions. If you're walking in boldness day by day, you do it by faith. You just do it by a choice that God will, his word is true. If God said he'll never leave me nor forsake me, that's true. Then I will go. If I have to go somewhere and meet someone and do something, and it's, it's going to be very scary, then I will do it by faith. I'll do it trusting in God, not in my own strength. It's a different year this year. Very different year this year. And you know what makes the year different? It's choices. That's what makes your year different. It doesn't just happen differently for you. It doesn't. You make different choices. Say with me, I need to make some different choices. Who's tired of the same old, same old? Yeah. Maybe you must stop making the same old decisions. Amen. Right. I want to read something. I want to do the offering here this morning. Just want to read to you um, in Genesis 24, verses 1. If Tristan, if you can just get Genesis 24, verses 1 talks about Abraham and there's a there's a thrust there's a huge thrust right now to not do what the Bible says there's a huge thrust there's a lot of people are saying uh, marriage is an old thing between a husband and wife there's new ways of joining with another human being. And that's one thing I do know. I know that for sure, is that we must never, ever try and change what is written in here. Amen? And it's up to you in your own homes. You know, Pastor and I, we stand up here every Sunday and we share the Word of God with you every Sunday because that's what we are called to do. And we remind you every Sunday exactly what this word says. But it's interesting how the television reminds you every day what it wants you to do. You must be very careful what you are taking in to your life. Because what you take in, you know, what you type on your computer is what you program into your life. So you have a mind, which is a computer. and We cannot conform. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you and I renew our minds? Is we read the Bible, we know what the Bible is. Keep that Bible close to you and live it out. Have your, your moral standards 
our moral standards are built on the Word of God. There's a huge thrust right now in the world to try and remove the Word of God from us. And we are not going to allow that. Amen? I can't hear you. Yeah. You've got to put your foot down. In Genesis, now Abraham was old, well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in some things. Oh, so you were reading. Let's carry on. Let's go back again. No, 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 no. It says, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. There we go. All. All things. So he had blessed his family. He blessed him with long life. He blessed him with a wife. He blessed him with children. He blessed him with finances. The Bible says that he was one of the richest men. And Abraham, I can safely say, was a man after God's own heart. And when you put God first in your life, literally, first, God and His plans and His Word needs to be number one in our lives. And then you can easily say, I am going to live a life of Abraham, just like Abraham. Okay? And so God had, amen. Thank you, Uncle Billy. God blesses those who follow Him. Amen. He blesses them. He, t- he tells us what to do. And we step into it and God anoints and blesses us. Did you know no blessing will come to you unless God sends it to you? (laughs) Oh, I heard once somebody say, I work hard. That's why I have. Well, who gives you the power to gain wealth? God. Karen, who gave you those amazing brains? It's God. It's God. God gives you the ideas. Do you know that I was actually listening to an article? This is not from the Bible. I was just reading an article about Elon Musk. That Elon Musk grew up in a home where his father was quite abusive to him and told him he was stupid. Uh, Do you think the father was right? Well, spiritually, I don't know <laughs> about to be too sharp. Elon Musk must get his life back into line. Amen. But who gave him those ideas to do what he's doing? And the article also said that he was on the autistic line. Oh, so you can have a form of autism and succeed. It sounds like it to me. They called it autistic, but he was called to do the things he has been called to do. God has caused him to develop things that have never been developed before. We must pray for that man. He's a South African. Many good things have come out of South Africa. Let me just say that to you. Very powerful things. Maybe, maybe just stand with, the, with me quickly and say, maybe I'm one of those people. Come on, stand with me. Mate. You never know. You just never know. Be seated. You just never know. That's why when I stand in front of people, I, I, I just give everybody a fair chance. I just speak the word and who knows, who knows, who knows. Who knows? Who thought? His father certainly didn't think that he was going to be a success. His own flesh and blood father. We watched an article the other day of, I think it was, it was David Beckham. Who all knows David Beckham? You know of David Beckham. Famous soccer player. And he could just walk. Just walk, like just about, just in nappies. And his father got the soccer ball and started kicking the soccer ball with him. Taught him how to kick with the left foot, kick with the right foot. I don't know much about soccer, but 
One thing Pastor Richard taught me, which taught us, our own boys, we've got three boys, which one is turning 40 this week. My Josh is turning 40. Can you believe it? I have a 40-year-old son. Hi, boo. It's like, really, Jesus? He said, yes, I've carried you and him for all these years. And pastor would teach our boys left and right foot. So I know. If you teach a young boy to play left and right, who plays soccer here? Let's see. Hands up. Must learn left and right foot. David Beckham's father took him and said, you're going to be a champion. Two different fathers. One that said, no, you're stupid. Who didn't know that about Elon Musk? I didn't know that. And yet he looks just like his son. Most parents that discourage their children don't like that child because they can see themselves in the child and they don't like themselves. Sorry, but that's how I know life to be. Normally people that have been abused, abuse. I'll get back, back to old A.B. just now. I'll get back to him. And so David Beckham's father trained him and trained him and trained him and trained him. That's why you can't expect a different year this year unless you train. Hello? Don't come with this religious stuff to me and say, it's just going to change. I'm going to possibly be spoke about Elon Musk. I'm the next Elon Musk. I'm just going to stay at home, fast and pray, and I'll become Elon Musk. No. Two things were driving those two men. One was a negativity, and the other one was a positivity. People pulling away from one's life, and the energy that Elon Musk took was, I will do this. I will be who I am supposed to be. Did you know that you are supposed to make a mark in this world? Uh, excuse me? But who knows that it's hard to make that mark? Hello? It's not easy. This year, you need to become the best version of yourself. You need to fight to be the best version of yourself, not the worst. If you've got a habit and you can't change that habit, it's time to change it so that you can become the best version of yourself. Amen? And Abraham was the best version of himself. He got his name in the Bible. And so I want to read to you about our Abi here. He was a wealthy man. God anointed Abraham with prosperity. He anointed him. He anointed him with prosperity. In Galatians 3 verse 13, if you can just get that scripture, Galatians 3 verse 13. But Christ... Has Christ has brought us out of the curse, from the curse pronounced by the law. God has taken us out. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. So anything that has been set aside... To break you down, any curse that you feel is there, I want you to know, through the cross, it has been removed. Hello? It has been removed. So even if there's poverty that comes all the way through the generations, I want you to know it stops with you and me. It stops. Pastor Richard and I, I'm going to have to walk aside. I know this thing's filming, but I need a tissue. Econ's blowing very, very hard. Thank you to those that put it. And I want you to know, you've got to stop blaming your childhood, your grandfather, the government, 
the white government, the black government, the pink government, the orange government. I don't know what government we, we're still blaming. Oh, no, it's definitely the politicians. No, nothing, nothing. And no one will stop you because God, if God be for you, who can successfully, successfully be against you? Who? You bring me that person. Elon Musk had a father that cursed him. David Beckham had a father that encouraged him. Two men. Two different men. I wonder who's the richest. I suppose Elon Musk, right? Someone took negativity and he ran with it and he said, I will not bow. Abraham had problems just like you and me. Him and Sari, they couldn't have kitty winks. That's not a nice thing. That's a terrible thing. Only if you haven't had children do you understand the pain of not having a child. But they carried on serving God. They carried on doing things and God blessed Abraham's home. God, if you let him and you obey his written word, he will come and he will bless your home. But let me tell you, progress is little by little, here a little, there a little. It's not big chunks and you become a millionaire overnight. That is a lie. Hello? There's no overnight success. I can just imagine what Elon Musk was like when he was a little chap. Little boys like these, these guys here. And some of us think our success only comes from another person. Did you know that you can encourage yourself daily in the Lord? You are to do that daily. You need to get up with purpose. I'm the kind of person, when I get up in the morning, I tell you what, I, I, as soon as I get up, the first thing I do is make my bed. And I make my bed. I'm going to be honest with you. This is not a prideful thing. I'm telling you the truth. If you lived in my house, Pastor Richard lives in my house. He knows. He lives in my room with me. My bed is as straight as a hotel bed. Not a wrinkle. I have my pillows in perfect position. You say, oh, you're a perfectionist. No. No. I stand up every day with purpose. I know who I am. I know whose I am. And I'm ready for anything God has for me. They say successful people get up every day and they make their beds. If you can't make your bed, you will never be a success. I'm being honest with you. You say, oh, but my mother comes and makes my bed. It's about time that change. Whose mother makes their bed for them? Let me see. Stand up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Brayden, do you make your own bed? He's not answering. He's not answering. Brayden, do you make your bed? He's still not answering. <laughs> if you want to win in life, you've got to get up. The Bible says whatever you put your hand to will prosper. So that means work. Prosperity means work work. When you come to church and you bring your tithes and your offerings because the Word of God says we must do, that's just part of it. But I believe God has the power to make you wealthy like Abraham. So God broke the curse. Throughout the work of Christ Jesus, God had blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing He promised to Abraham. Because you and I believe in Jesus Christ, the anointing God placed on Ab Abraham to prosper is on us as well. 
Either you believe this thing or you've been brainwashed by that television. I'm telling you now, there's two Christians, brainwashed ones and believing ones. I'm telling you now, that, that's two. If you're obedient to God, you're an obedient child. And God says, oh, watch me, watch me. I will bless you. I'll call such favor to come upon you. Sometimes I stand back in an amazement, at amazement at the favor God has put on my life. But the thing is, what's with me is I believe this. Pastor and I, we believe this. We don't tell you to do anything that we don't do ourselves. Yeah. Suddenly there's times I see money just disappearing out of our account. And I don't even have to ask. I don't even have to say anything. Pastor's tithed. <laughs> Tithes are, are, have been given. They've been given. It's because how can we possibly stand before you, tell you to do something, and we don't do it ourselves? It's hypocritical. Yet I know others don't obey that too. Why did God put this anointing on, our, on us? In Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, and you shall remember, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18, Tristan, it says, you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the power to get wealth, that He may establish His covenant, which He swore to His fathers, and uh, as it is this day. This could be paraphrased as follows in Deuteronomy 8.18. It says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the anointing to accumulate wealth. There's an anointing. There's an anointing. Hard work. Whatever you put these hands to will prosper. So you've got to work. You've got to get up every day. You've got to make your bed every day. I have another rule that I live by. It's just silly little things, but they're big. I won't sit down and eat until every pot is washed. Because you know what? I don't like walking into the kitchen, into a dirty kitchen to clean up after my stomach's full and I've eaten. Right? Hello? I think it's also developed at females where <laughs> when you've cleaned the kitchen so many times. I mean, who does the same as me? You clean everything before you eat. It helps. And all you have to do is rinse the plates and wash them and stack them. You can make life a lot easier by just getting it right. You can make life easier. We can make life easier. He's given you the anointing to accumulate wealth. So that God can use it to spread His gospel in order to bring all men into covenant relationship with Himself. This is the promise He made to the father of Abram, which still stands today. It still stands today. And I want you to know the whole motive for that is for winning souls for others to come into the kingdom of God, to keep these lights on, to keep these aircons running. It's so comfortable. But let me tell you, it takes money to do that. Let me just tell you, it's not cheap. How do you get the anointing to start working in our lives? Well, let's ask Jesus. In Luke 6 verse 38, if you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure Pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Where the measure you're using use is giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what you get back. The Lord Jesus is telling us, we decide how much we want back. By the amount we are giving. If we give large, we receive large. If we give small, we receive small. I'm telling you right now, the power lies in our hands. The authority lies in our hands. Some of us start off small. And let me just tell you, it's not 
when that little widow only had two mites. And the Lord said, that was big. That was big for her because that's all she had. God doesn't look at like, okay, you know, you, you get some churches and all the rich people get to sit in the front. We put our kids in the front, yeah. They ain't got no money. Only what they can get out of their mom and dad, right? I remember with Pastor Fred, great man of God that lived. Excuse me, wiping my nose. Great man of God that lived. And people would come with big chicks. And they would come to Pastor Fred and give it to him. And he'd say, take it and put it in the offering. Don't come and buy me. I'm not bought. I'm not sold. And I won't like you more because you put more money in. It's entirely up to you on your obedient levels. No man of God should be bought or sold. We are not bought or sold. Pastor and I have had people promise us stuff. Oh, my hat. We are going to come and put millions into your property. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Big talk, no action. Let me just tell you, God is going to furnish this property. God is going to furnish this property. God is going to put it into someone's heart that doesn't need praises. Because the minute some people get money, they, they use it to get authority and power. You don't come in here. This is God's. We only want from God. Amen. And when it comes from God, it's going to be good. Anything comes from God is good. Say with me, good. Right, stand with me. We're going to make a confession. Put your hand on your heart, and we're going to make a bold confession. Jesus is showing me how to prosper financially. I am a tither. I give offerings. And I live under God's blessing and divine favor. He guides me by His Spirit. He leads, He is leading me into financial prosperity for the sake of the harvest. In these last days, I will be a blessing to many. I will witness to them of the greatness of our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, as we come to you, Lord, and we give to you, Father, it's a, it's a spiritual move, Father. It's an a, a act of obedience to your written word, Father. None of us in this room is above your written word, Father. And you require for us to give so that souls can be saved, so that things can continue and people's lives can be changed and transformed. We thank you, Father, for this, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for what you've already given us, Lord, and what you're about to give us. Father, we thank you for the favor of God and for the favor of man to be upon International Christian Center, Peter Maritzburg and Pinetown. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you, God, that your hand is fixedly placed upon each and every one of us. And Lord, when we focus on souls and we focus on your word and we focus Focus on being obedient and we start to act out your word, Father. Father, we thank you for the Abraham blessing, favor of Abraham to be upon each and every one of us, that as we walk in the highways and byways and as we go from place to place, I thank you, Father, that the favor of God and the favor of man will be upon us, Father, and I thank you, Lord, that all our bills will be paid and all the things we have called on and asked you for, Father, all those problems, we thank you, Father, for miracle power in our lives, in Jesus' name, and we all said, Amen. Thanks, Izzy. God bless you. You may be seated. Get you know what I learned decades ago? Are you listening to me now? Those of you who have secular work and have businesses, don't try and... Yes, you have to do what you can do, but don't see you as sole provider for you and your family. 
you do all what you can do that you know with a good conscience and, and as scripture, you have to work and do it, but trust God for the increase. Trust God to make up the difference. Hey, we used to sing that song, old song, Jesus makes the difference in me. Once I was blind, now I can see Jesus makes the difference in me. The way I saw that song is like, because I knew it, I experienced it in secular work. I used to give uh, 20% of my income into the church. 10% tithe, 10% offerings. I did it by faith. Because I knew the scripture says, given it shall be given to you. How? Good measure, pressed down. I knew my father's not a liar. He, he cares for me. I had that revelation decades ago before I even went into the ministry. And we were 10 days short of income. When I, you calculate, if, you, if any of you get 20%, uh, take 20% of your gross income, and then work out how many days can you survive off, off those 20 days. I worked out it was about 10 days of, my, of, of our life that that 20% could cover. Maybe not even. But I tell you what, the only, I've only run out of petrol, I think, once in those days. I only ran out of petrol once, maybe twice. But God provided all of our needs. All of our needs. And the day that I out of, ran out of petrol, uh, somebody drove past, knew who I was. What's his problem, Richard? I've run out of petrol. Okay. Went to the garage, got petrol, put it in, on my way again. Just a little hiccup. Say boldness. Boldness is faith in the word. I'm not talking about having a, your own kind of boldness now. Cheeky. I'm talking about Bold, you, you, you remember you've always heard me say this, bold thinking, bold believing in, bold speaking. Well, it's time to have some bold receiving. <laughs> bold receiving. You can hear me, I'm receiving boldly from God because I'm, I'm actually saying this unto the Lord when I say we have all the money. I'm actually exonerating, not exonerating, I'm actually uh, acknowledging God in the, in, in the midst when I say we have the money already. We actually do. Can I give you one scripture as well that I've taught you? Uh, Mark 11, I think it's 24. Jesus said, when you pray, believe that you receive. That's why I say we've got the money already because I prayed years ago. That's why I can confidently say we've got all the money we need for the, and right now we are making correct preparations. We just sat with the lawyers and we're sitting with them more and more to get uh, compliant and paperwork done so that we can uh, put, be in a position where we can go forward. I can't explain all the details to you. It's a lot. It's a lot. I, I, I was backing off it for a while and the Lord said, no, I will help you. I will help you. And the Lord's been helping us. And so never try and think you, you must do everything on your own. Go, the, the Bible says the Lord is my helper. I don't know if any of you saw my, my post on Facebook. Uh, it's, a, it's a little phrase God gave me. God will only give you what you can handle, not what will mishandle you. And then he gave me that scripture that I put on Facebook, Hebrews 13, verse 5. We always quote one, the only one phrase of that whole scripture. Hey, if someone can put it up here, Hebrews 13, verse 5. Uh, we always quote from that scripture, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But you've got to see the whole scripture. It's, it's to do with not being covetous. And it's, doing, it's to do with being content. Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6. I should have put verse 6 in. Don't be covetous, be content with you. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Then I think it's verse 6 that says, uh, therefore we can say, what can man do to me? It's to do with trust, that scripture. It's to do with trust and faith, boldness in believing God. I will go through every single day of my life without lack. 
I will increase, God's government in peace will increase in my life day by day by day by day. I will not fear what can man do to me? What can government do to me? What can the enemy do to me? What can this one, what can that one? Hey, listen, God is the creator. He's in control. I hope you're getting something so far. Isaiah 32 verse 17, the work of righteousness will be peace and the effect of righteousness, quietness and assurance forever. It's a very powerful scripture. <laughs> Yo, my goodness. Ah, let righteousness work in you. Let your right standing work for you. There'll be peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken, everything supplied. Absence of terror. And the effect of righteousness, the work and effect of righteousness. So the work is peace. The effect is quietness and assurance forever. Quietness doesn't mean with your mouth closed. Quietness is a form of tranquility, of, of like rest, yeah, confident rest that God's got me covered. 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 5, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. Much assurance. Much more much. <laughs> Look at some of these people quickly. Now, I'm not going to go through all the scriptures, but, you, but I want to show you people who stood boldly in God's presence and got results. Abraham contended with God for Sodom and Gomorrah in, in Genesis 18. I mean, he bartered with God. Maybe he was an Indian, actually. Gita, <laughs> come on, Lord, and all now, because he was a man from the East. He could have been an Indian. We don't know, actually. Or, or, or Chinese or of that, because he was from the East, if I'm not mistaken. I know Job was. And then Moses, in Exodus 32, verses 9 to 14, God's talking to Moses. He says, I've had enough of the stiff-necked people. Stand aside. Let me, let me annihilate them, and I'll make from you another generation, another race, another another." nation, I should say. And Moses contended uh, God face to face. And in, 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 in essence, God, Moses said, you'll not do no such thing. <laughs> because, and then he gives God a reason. God says, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you. And then you get uh, Phineas in Numbers 25. God is saying to uh, I think it was Moses at that time, bring all the leaders, they, they are, they've done wrong, they're they getting Midianite wives and all that, and I want to destroy them. And I think that's what they did. And then, then one of the guys comes bragging with his heathen wife to God in front of all the people. And Phineas, who was, I think, the son of, of, of one of the high priests, gets a, a spear, and if you look at what he did, he went and he chased after that, that Israel leader and his Midianite wife. They ran into the temple because in those days, God had already spoken about certain places that were cities of refuge, so they thought, oh, he's not going to kill us in the temple. He kills him in the temple. In other words, he kind of broke the law, but God commended him for his zeal for righteousness boldness. So when Phineas was doing that, he was doing it on behalf of, of righteousness. What do you think about David and Goliath? We are books coming out soon. We just nearly, it's finished, Memoirs of a Champion. When you read that account there and the things that God gave us to say, you'll be encouraged with boldness. David was bold. Why? Because one of the phrases was when Goliath was taunting them 40 days and 40 nights and, and everyone, the Bible says that the, the soldiers ran and even Saul was scared. David comes on as a, as a visitor on the scene, bringing, his, bringing some food to his brothers and he overhears this, what's going on and he's asking, what's going on here? <laughs> 
Oh, the, here's the story. Da- David says, what? I can imagine him. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Can you see where David's faith was in? Not, in? not in his strength, not in Goliath's strength, but in the armies of the living God. He says, I'll go and fight him. Whew. When last did you have that audacity against that spirit of poverty, that debt, that sickness, that condition in your life? You've got to treat it like a Goliath. Go and fight it. Go fight it with a word. Go fight it with prayer and fasting. Go fight it with confessions of faith. What you and I do not overcome will overcome us eventually. Bottom line, guys. If you let that spirit of fear torment you and you don't come against it with your mouth, with scripture, with faith, with believing, it will eventually overcome you. Listen, the devil watches us. He watches our predictabilities. He looks for gaps because the Bible says when when the hedge is down, the serpent will bite Don't let him bite. Don't let the hedge down. Cover your hedge. And there's an interesting scripture. David was also bold before God first. I found just one occasion, but I think there's more. In Psalm 7 verse 8, David makes this statement. He says, the Lord shall judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord. (laughs) What? But look what he says, according to my righteousness and according to my integrity within me. He knew he was clean. Yeah, we know he blew it, eh? But you know what? He was bold enough to repent. And, and that takes boldness to do before God, to repent. When last did you genuinely repent before God? You know what repentance is? It's changing and not doing what you, you, you did to displease God or your husband or your wife, the dog, the cat or the cockroach. Do some, do make a change in your life. Be pleasing. I just remembered another scripture. Hebrews 10 could be verse 36 or 38 uh, toward there. It says, don't cast away your confidence because it has great return of reward. And then it carries on and it says, God says, my soul will have no pleasure in, in him that doubts. Doubt is fear. Doubt is believing a lie. And the scripture says, if you observe a lying vanity, you, you forsake your own mercy. In verse 36, what does verse 36 say? Don't cast away your confidence, your boldness. Because when you do, when you forsake confidence, the scripture says, then then that will happen. Because your confidence is part of your boldness and your faith. It has great reward. I, I had a revelation, well, through a word a preacher preached one day. Because I always used to uh, I always used to look for compliments because of, the, of the, my upbringing. Even in, even in the ministry, I would like ask people, did I do okay and whatever and stuff like that. And I don't know, uh, one time and then a preacher came and he, he made this statement and it shook me. He said, God cannot use somebody who's full of rejection. Because rejection makes you introverted, always looking at yourself, me, my, I. Uh, and, and rejection is a, also has a persecution complex, a false persecution complex. Everyone's against me. So if you suffer with rejection, you are boxed in. God can't do anything with you because you're too self-conscious and you've got to be dead to self and alive to Christ. And I tell you, that shook me. And from that day, I began to care for what I said, carefully how I acted. It was hard. It was hard because I, I, I grew up, you know, with rejection. And I had to overcome that spirit. And I had to put it, put it aside and, and be bold. 
And then God uses you according to your boldness, by the way. According to your faith. Scripture says it. According to your faith, Jesus said, be it unto you. Faith, boldness, courage, confidence, they all go hand in hand. <laughs> Including love. 1 John 1 verse 17. Now this is the confidence we have in him. Uh, that, that we, I think we have, can have boldness on the day of judgment. Uh, it doesn't have love in there. But it says, as he is, so are we in this life. God is love. And if you, if you accept the terms of love, and you and I walk in love, it's bold to walk in love, because love forgives. Love is kind. You know, 1 Corinthians 13, those, those are some tough things to do, what love is. Love is forgiving. <laughs> love is not racial. Love has no gender status or social status. Love, love, love will obey the commandments, those basics of the faith I always talk about. Look how bold Joshua was. Look, well, look what happens when you get bold to stand in his presence. Remember, Joshua was down there in the valley. They were fighting the enemy. Uh, I think this was after a time Moses had already gone to be with the Lord. And I don't know if they were winning. And, and Joshua, I mean, think about this. Joshua could see, hey, we need more time. So he goes and look at this. It says, Joshua 10 verses 12 and 13. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He first goes and addresses God. God, we got a problem. We need a plan. <laughs> Goes and talks to God, stands boldly in God's presence. Look what he does next. It says, and he said in the sight of Israel, when you stand bold in God's presence, you will say things in the sight of people that will shock them, but it will be for their benefit. No one's ever done this before. He says, in the sight of Israel, so it wasn't a private thing, sun stands still over Gibeon and moon over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still. Yes. <laughs> Down, boy. When you look at that in, in science, the whole universe came to a standstill because we know that the sun doesn't go around the earth. The earth goes around the sun. The earth froze. And the whole of maybe our galaxy system because it's all like a magnetic cog, everything. One man literally stopped the universe. Because you know what? He, was, he approached the God of the universe. And he probably got a word of knowledge. God gave him permission. Go and do that. I'm behind you. <laughs> and so the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenge upon their enemies. See, it's always with a purpose. You don't have boldness for the sake of uh, uh, pride. The Bible says Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth, yet did the greatest miracles known to man. You, you try and open a, a, a water, a whole sea. You call down plagues. See how powerful your anointing is. Even preachers who boast and, you know, uh, uh, again, I say it again. A lot of preachers have such pride when they lay hands on people and they fall down. <laughs> watch, watch their stance. So you'll know preachers proud if when someone falls down and he walks away with like a pigeon chest, you know, peacock chest. No, man. If someone falls, it, it, it must be God. Yes, but you get these eyes that come and hoy, as they say. And yeah, they might carry that anointing, but they're misusing it. Elijah, I'm nearly finished. I'm trying to come in for landing. Elijah, 1 Kings 17 verse 1. I always quote the scripture. And Elijah the Tishbite, not to, he didn't have Tishbite. <laughs> Elijah the Tish, Tishbite, the inhabitant of Gilead, said to Ahab. Now this Ahab was Jezebel's husband and uncle. They were killing the prophets. Elijah knew this. 
And, and, and he, he, so what made him stand before Ahab? Look what, his, look what his conversation was. As the Lord God of Israel lives. In other words, as sure as God is alive. <laughs> before whom I stand. Oh, I love that scripture. That's all this time of prayer and fasting. You've got you to come boldly to the throne of grace. And you're going to make your, your adoption demands, <laughs> your mercy demands. You're going to start requisitioning. Don't listen to me. Do not tolerate lack, poverty, sickness, defeat. Do not tolerate it. You can't come out of it. You can't come out of that debt. Okay, I'm going to say something to you. I've been confessing that our, our bond is coming down. Well, yesterday, by the grace of God, I put 100000 into our bond. Not church money, bro. Not church money. If it works for me, it can work for you. I'm a tither and a giver and a believer. I want to honor my heavenly Father's name. Hence I wrote that book, The Father and I. Why do you think God would give me that if I, if, if I, don't, if I don't believe it, if I don't walk in it? And I found Gita and I said, Gita, blah, 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 bam, boom, bang, bow, which is the best decision to do here. She didn't know that, uh, she maybe thought I was talking for someone else. And, and I've been confessing it. And when the money came in, Pastor David said, hey, practice what you preach. Kokamanji, the bond. It was hard because there's other things that <laughs> you want to do with that money. And I'm saying, but Deb, we can do this, we can do that. Bond. We're killing that bond. We're taking that giant down. We're eating that elephant one bite at a time. I'm showing you where I stand in this position as well, but I'm believing God. I'm helping you. I'm not bragging you. Are you listening to me? It's working for me because I've been confessing and I've been, I've been saying it in some of my sermons. But you know what? With God, all things are possible. Well, I'm still believing. I'm still believing. Just like I keep saying the, the money for the land. It's coming, guys. You will see it. Don't be like Thomas. In your heart, say, I believe it when I see it. No, you, you believe it, then you see it. That's how faith works. And I've been calling in money to pay our bond besides the, the, the thing, because it's it's, it is a bondage. You know, fight the good fight of faith. And the first lump sum came. It works, guys. I don't know where the next lump is coming from, but I'm telling you what, lumps are coming. I'm confessing. I don't know about you. I'm on a roll now. I'm actually on a roll. I hit one giant down, and I'm going for his brothers. Yeah, come on. All things are possible to him who believes. All things are possible to you who believes. Everything is possible if you can just believe it. Elijah said, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. Hannah, 1 Samuel chapter 1, he has a woman whose husband had her and another auntie as his wife. And the auntie, the other auntie, I just forget her name, she was having children and she was mocking Hannah. So one day Hannah and, uh, and Alcana, I think that's what his name was, they go to church and Hannah starts getting a hold, as it were, of the garment. <laughs> you know, like that woman with the issue of blood? You know how bold it was? She broke the law. She broke the ceremonial laws of Moses to go out of her house and grab Jesus by his garment. She wasn't allowed to do that. She could have got in prison for that. I'm not saying break the law, but anyway, faith got her. Her faith got her. And before the law could catch up to her, she was healed. Think about that. Imagine the police coming. Are we going to arrest this woman? Evidence. 
where's the evidence? I, I, I'm not breaking the law. I don't know if you can catch it. First time I've seen that. Uh, God will give you a miracle before the devil can even know what's happened, man. Oh, my goodness. So Hannah starts fighting with a high priest. It's interesting that it was Eli, the high priest. Jesus is a high priest. We're coming to an amazing scripture just now. Nearly, nearly finished. And she, she, you could say, by, listen to me, by wrestling with, with, with a man of God sometimes, that's what sometimes you need to tell us. If you can't handle a situation, don't keep it quiet. I've seen something interesting about coming to, to, to pastors or shepherds. I did this when we were given a 700,000 rand bull for the taxes of this land. I mean, I, I, I like nearly fell to pieces and I kept it secret from Pastor Debbie, from anyone. And I, I, th- I thought, this is what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to go to Carte Blanche and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually when push came to shove, I went to Pastor Fred. I said, Pastor, and, and Pastor Debbie didn't even know about it. It, it was illegal what the government were doing. But they hit me with this bill for 700,000 rand. It, it, it shook me. It was two days before Christmas as well. And, and let Christmas go by. Then eventually I went to Pastor Fred and I told him. It was like, this is what his response was. He says, oh, Richard, 700,000 is nothing, man. Literally. He says, pay it. Like, you know, he says, he says, you got given the land for nothing, so you must, so for the price of 700, it's nothing. Then I still kind of felt, anyway, so that, that whole thing was snuffed out because I, uh, someone was literally from the government department trying to steal money from us for themselves. So that was snuffed out like anything. So the Bible says, be not afraid of sudden fear when it comes. That was sudden fear to me. It it, it was a legal thing that I thought, I'm finished now. So sometimes the devil will come with a big threat. Yeah, geezer burst, flat tire, accident, loss of this, loss of that. Oh God, how am I going to recover? No, where there's a, a will, not your will, where there's his will, there's always a way. Because Jesus is also the way out of things. He's the way into blessing and he's the way out of trouble. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You need to take a new look at Psalm 23 and boldly walk in the benefits of Psalm 23. Gosh, I bet I hurry. Oh, Father. I missed out a scripture. I put it in. No, no, I've got it. It's coming. Just give me a few more minutes, guys, because this is, this is going to change your life. So Hannah gets her prayer answered. God gives her a child. That's where Samuel the prophet comes in. Imagine if she never contested with a high priest. She would never have had the miracle, and we would have never had the book of Samuel or the ministry of Samuel. Then Peter In Matthew 16, verses 15 to 16, Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you know how bold this is? He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Nobody had had that revelation yet, except the demons knew. Demons knew before Peter, I think. If you go chronologically, they knew Jesus was the Christ. That's what Jesus said to them, shut up. (laughs) You know, don't don't let it out just yet. And, And then what did, what did Jesus say back to Peter? Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Flesh and blood never real, revealed this to you, but my Father who's in heaven. Why? Because Peter was standing in the presence of God. And then Paul, just read the epistles, the 14 books that Paul wrote. And you see the boldness that Paul had, how he faced persecution every time. He never wavered. Haven't got time. He's, he's got story after story after story of coming through and overcoming and always being bold. Now this, this might bless you. I've got two more scriptures to share. You know the, the, what, I, what I call the disciples' prayer? People call the Lord's prayer. 
our Father who is in heaven. I'm going to go through it quickly. From Matthew chapter 6. And I've always wondered about this. But it's the first time I'm actually making it public. Because it's always been cooking in my heart about certain aspects of this prayer. So I'm going to share it now for the first time publicly. And this might shake some of you. It might challenge some of your religious thinking, what I'm about to show you in this portion of Scripture, that I always encourage you to pray every day. It's not the Lord's Prayer, it's the disciples' prayer. The Lord's Prayer is John chapter 17. Matthew 6, verses 9 to 13. In this manner, therefore pray. Say pray. What is prayer? Who, when you pray, who are you actually talking to? Men, demons, angels, or God? We always know prayer is the connotation of approaching the throne of grace. <laughs> Look how Jesus taught us that we must pray. And I'm going to show you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Hallowed is a bold statement. Who, gives, who has the right to say God to him that you are hallowed? It's like, it's like somebody coming to me and saying, uh, it's almost like someone saying, you give me permission to be a pastor. It's almost like, that's how I said, hallowed be your name. No, God's hallowed already without me saying it or not. Are you with me? But he wants us to address him like that because that's who he is. But he wants it, us to acknowledge, hallowed be your name, our Father in heaven. That's actually the first word, Father, not God. You've you got to address God as Father. You've got to must say Father. Stop praying and using the name God. Now and then you can. I always, Jesus said, he said to us in John chapter 16, he said, no more must you pray to me, but pray to your Father in my name. Father, say Father in heaven. You know, you know what a privilege and a right it is to call God, the one who inhabits eternity, your dad? <laughs> That's bold, man. He gave us the right to call him Father. Didn't come from mankind. I don't know if you can catch that. You might catch it on another day. Hallowed be your name. Do we have to say that? Because he's hallowed already. But it's for our sakes we got to say hallowed. Then watch this. Your kingdom come. It's, <clears throat> when you look here, there's no begging in this, this portion of prayer. No, not a drop of begging, not a drop of intimidation, not a drop of timidity. Everything about this prayer is coming boldly to the throne of grace. Watch, we'll carry on. Your kingdom come. In other words, you're putting a demand on God, bring it down. <laughs> Your will be done. I don't know if you can see that. It's like almost an audacity. Your will be done. Make it happen, God. I don't know. That's how I've always seen it. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us. Not please. Give us. What? You can tell God, give you. <laughs> Jesus. The word taught us to pray like this. Give us this day our daily bread. Demands of the benefits of your adoption and your righteousness and your inheritance and whatever else you want to call it. Bold, this is a bold way of praying. Forgive us our debts. There's a scripture. Oh Lord, where's the scripture? I don't know if it's Daniel or Isaiah. The Lord says, concerning the works of my hands, command you me. Command me. I know some people have tried to water that scripture down. God says, concerning the works of my hands, command me. Call unto me. I've, I've taught you that that word means 
bring God to attention, summons him to an audience that you want to talk to him now. Look at all the men and women of God I'm, I'm showing you examples of. That's how, you see, God is a bold God. That's, he, he needs to be approached that way, humbly, but not creepy crawly style, not religiously. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation. It's commanding God. This is very sacrilegious to a religious spirit. Some people will never accept what I'm saying now. They'll say, no, no, you can't, you can't command God. Hmm? Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Jesus, have mercy on me, son of David. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. Is that not bold? Grabbing hold of Jesus' garment? You know what I saw with that woman with the issue of blood? If she never got instantly healed, she would have, Jesus would have dragged her down the road. She wasn't going to let go. <laughs> but because of the anointing in Jesus, that, that miracle came instantly. Deliver us from evil. Can you look at this? This prayer in a new light. It's coming boldly to the throne of grace and obtaining mercy. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. It's, it's a confident prayer. No, I'm not talking about bold, arrogant. I'm not talking about pride and arrogance now, but bold. Hey, Amen. Listen, this is so true. I am convinced. Hey, Hamish, I'm going to put you on the spot now. Has Karen ever come in a, in a bold form to ask you something that, that, that he needed, that was like urgent, and, and he didn't consider whether you could afford it or not? Did he ever approach you about some kind of a need? Like, Dad, I need money for, I don't know, this or whatever. Has, has he ever done that? Let me ask the men generally. Luba Bala, who's, who's men here? Any other men here? Has your, have your children ever approached you and said, I need something? And they, they came with a, with an, it, it, may, maybe it was like an urgency. I've had it. I still have it. My, my children know. And I've never used the word, I can't afford it. Maybe I did at one stage. Izzy's gonna, his nose mine's ticking over. Boy. <laughs> but I, where, where it comes to reasonable whatever, if my children are in need, genuine need, I will move heaven and earth and hell to, help, to get them out of it. But they've got to give me permission to get involved. God wants to move your heaven, your earth, and your hell, whatever's standing in your way. But you've got to help him to move it. If you've got to come boldly to his throne of grace. He has the last scripture. I always quote the scripture in verse 16, but I want to read it from verse 14. And then we end up at verse 16. So next time I quote the scripture, verse 14 and 15 is the foundation of, for, for verse 16. Hebrews 4 verses 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Don't change your prayer. Don't change your thinking because it will change your speaking. Let us hold fast our confession. Some Bible translations say profession, which means the whole of the word, the whole of the covenant. Remember, God is a God of, of covenant. He only operates through covenant. He can only operate through his word. And he wants, he's waiting for us to bring his word to him. Verse 15, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. That's the key there but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. In other words, he knows every problem you're going through. 
but he wants you to approach him concerning it. Then verse 16 comes in. Let us therefore. You know, I want to know why there's a, the word is therefore is there? Because it's there for something. <laughs> it's there for a reason. <laughs> Let us therefore come how to the throne of the, the throne of stinginess, the throne of I'll see about it, the throne of debate. Come on. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. You know how you do it? You'll have to get, move that camera. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move through the audience now. Imagine if Luba Bala was, was God now. Are you ready there? You're going to have to track me. This is the natural way to try and tell you what we got to, how we have to do it spiritually. We're going to come boldly to the throne of grace. Dad. <laughs> I need a hundred bucks. Sure thing. <laughs> you got a hundred bucks on you. Two hundred in the car. In the car. <laughs> but you, you get this. Oh, sorry, sorry. You get the picture. God has got a very big lap. It's big enough for all of us to fit on. When last did you go and jump on God's lap? A, a, a wisp of, of really what it means. He didn't say only when things are going right. Come boldly, especially when things are going wrong. God, I'm in a predicament, man. Not man, God. <laughs> Father, I'm in a predicament. But he wants to be approached. Even if you did wrong, approach him. Because you know what? He's a God of forgiveness. As long as you don't do it again. Like David, he was able to say, my integrity. Yet he committed murder, pride, and adultery. Big major sins. And yet he says, God, judge me according to my righteousness <laughs> and my integrity of my heart. We've been made righteous. We don't stand in our own righteousness or our own good works. Oh gosh, if you can get a revelation of that. Stand, let's pray. I don't know if you got something out of that. The Lord gave me this message now, a few minutes ago. It's all the scriptures. Let me just say this for those of you in the building and those of you watching online. You'll never know this privilege unless you give, hand your life over 100% to the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless you surrender fully. You've given your life to Jesus. Let me say this. I was wrestling with God Last night on my bed, repenting of a lot of stuff and going over stuff, and I realized something, and I, I think I need to share this. I, I, I was, salvation is instant. Because the Bible says Jesus has become both Lord and Savior. And we, too many of us know Jesus as Savior, but not Lord. Lord means his master, his boss over, over every area of your life. And that probably, God will never lord it over you without you willingly surrendering an area of your life to him. And I think that's where a lot of us lose it. We, we think we, he's going to condemn us. We think he's going to expose us. We think he's going to whatever. No. If there's any kind of sin failure or inadequacy, inferiority complex, or whatever in your life, bring it to God and say, Lord, I know I'm this Jacob, but I need to become the Israel in this area. Help me sort this thing out in my life. And he will. Don't hide things from God. 
because it'll keep you bound up. And then you know what? What you hide from God festers. And the Bible says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. It spoils the rest of your, your everything. It pollutes everything in, in your life with people, with God, and whatever. Be the truth. Come clean. Bring it to God. If you've got issues or sin in your life, you see, we, you know, I, I don't have, have you noticed, I don't have altar calls for those things anymore. People come to the altar, put your sin here. Yes, you've been bad. You've done this, that. No. It's a decision. Repentance is a decision. And forgiveness is immediate from the throne of grace. You've got to make the change. I've got to make the change. Hey, I remember in old Pentecostal days, we used to come snort and throw it to this altar. And you know what? It didn't change us. If we didn't mean business with God, no matter how much crying, falling down, huffing and puffing, whatever and whatever, didn't change, didn't change us. We had to go home, and when that temptation came, we had to overcome it. In the dark, in private. Yeah, there are times when deliverance will come, but you've got to receive it by faith. You've got to just obey the written word. The strongest believer is a, is a believer who can obey what's in the scripture and doesn't have to be pampered all the time. Father, I pray for us today, God. Give, a, give us the revelation of this word in whatever way you can explain it and be the after preacher, Holy Spirit, to your people. Where, where we read creation was not originated by man. The earth was not man's idea. We are not our idea. We couldn't create ourselves. You started it because you wanted eternal companionship. You wanted children, Lord. <laughs> you wanted someone that was of your kind in your image and likeness. So you went ahead and created it, knowing that a lot of it would be messed up. But you still went ahead, Lord. You still want us. You still want to walk with us and us to walk with you. You still want to be our shepherd and our father, our savior, our Emmanuel, our deliverer, our healer, our provider, our protector. You always want to be that. You've given us promises that that have the word eternal in it, eternal life, eternal spirit of promise, eternal Lord and Savior, eternal Heavenly Father. It's not only for this life, it's forever, Lord. So Father, we might as well just surrender to the fact we're gonna be with you forever. But right now, it's our apprenticeship here for eternity and we have to make it work. We have to overcome. We have to believe. We have to love. We have to have hope and faith, Lord, for our good and our children's good, our family's good and friends and even our enemies that will affect them to come to Christ, Lord. Father, I just pray for continuing this word in our hearts, Lord. That there'd be manifestations of your mercy, manifestations of our boldness toward you, Father, that we will see needs provided, deliverance from our enemies, forgiveness of sin, victory after victory after victory after victory, Lord, increase after increase. From one level of faith to another level, from glory to glory. Father, I bind every demon spirit of hell that would lie against this message. I pray, Lord, that the entrance of your word, just like this light is shining on me, it would expose, Lord, the details and, and, uh, and well, of, of your glory, Father, and the magnificence of your love, Lord. And, and that, that uh, the, the revelation of this word would, would enlighten and open our hearts to see God loves me. So what's my problem? So what's my issue? I don't really have any. If God loves me, he's my father. 
Thank you for this, Lord. In Jesus' name we all said. Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center, Peter Maritzburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows, at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins as I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood. I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, Contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray.